I have an, I have an addiction to foam. <laughs> I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today we're gonna foam this big, beautiful Mercedes, but without a pressure washer, without a foam cannon, even without a hose. Look, if you love foam, but you don't have all that money in your pocket, or you don't wanna buy the expensive cranes of pressure washer, the yep. MJJC foam cannon, like, you know the good stuff out there, right? Right. And it's not always the most expensive, but sometimes you're just getting started with detailing, you see all the foam in the videos, and you're like, I want that, and that, is what we're here to provide. Exactly, so today we're gonna to be foaming this Mercedes, we're gonna be cleaning it, we're gonna be decontaminating as well because we're prepping this for another video where we're gonna be polishing it and coating it. Ooh. That being said, we have a bucket, we have a wash mitt, but we don't have anything in it other than water. I like Rinse's wash, Yeah, I love Incredible Suds for a contact wash. And we're literally just putting in about an ounce. We have our hose here, Those are good suds. Not as dramatic as with the pressure washer, but hey, we have good suds. Now, speaking of IK foamers, yes, it is a bit of a cost to get an IK foamer, but they're extremely versatile. And we have two of them right here by Nick. The one further away from me with the little green thing on it, that is Incredible Suds diluted 32 to one in the IK foamer. In this one, we have All Clean, diluted 15 to one for the wheels and the nastier areas of this vehicle. And the all clean, just like half an ounce of Incredible Suds will give it a more clingy foam, because you know, Incredible Suds and foam sort of go together really well. I try to tap into the wisdom in your brain, because yeah. you have all these ideas. Like Ivan's the guy who knows all the rules, knows when to break them, creates new rules. So I'm always interested in what's going on in there. <laughs> So incredible suds, or sorry, all clean on the wheel. These wheels were a little nasty. There we have it. Now the wheels are treated. I can see the browning coming off the wheels right very nicely already. Exactly. Off you go with the foam. Enjoy. Are we pre-pumped? Uh, we're pre-pumped, we're ready to go. Let's do it. So as you can see, it's not as thick a foam as we get with the foam cannon, but Still a nice thick foam, and it's gonna do what we need it to do. In this instance, we're pre-treating. We're gonna let this foam do its job, work on the, uh, the dirt that's on the vehicle, and eventually, we're gonna rinse this off using the garden hose, not the pressure washer. How's my coverage? Good. All right. Yep. While Nick is foaming the other side of the car, I don't have to worry about getting overspray from the foam cannon, so I can start cleaning the wheels. So Nick's still getting foam out of that? Oh, absolutely. And you know, one trick with the IK foamer is to not put too much liquid in. So in this case, we just put one gallon of water, four ounces of incredible suds, and we're ready to go. And the reason you don't want to put too much is when you do put too much, then you have the issue of too much water means not enough space for air, not enough space for air means you're not gonna get foam for long. I'm back here foaming the rear part of the vehicle, giving it a little extra foam because we know this part of the vehicle gets extremely dirty. Talk about the aerodynamics of why the rear part of a vehicle gets all the contaminants and all the kickback from the, the road? So basically, especially a square vehicle like this, it's going through the air, you have high pressure on the side here, low pressure underneath the vehicle, and as soon as it reaches the end, it doesn't wrap around the corner. 
So it creates a vortex behind here, and that vortex is just a, a magnet for everything. So your brake dust ends up there, that's why the back end always has more iron contamination. The dirt, et cetera, you go down a dirt road, you see some SUVs going down the road, the back of it is just dust. The sides look okay. They went down a dirt road, it just sticks there. Now, the owner of this vehicle admittedly doesn't take really good care of it. So, but we're here to correct that. And hopefully once he sees the nice shiny paint that he hasn't seen for a number of years, might take care of it a little better. Now, we're in a controlled environment. One important thing is do not spray all clean, even soap on a hot surface. These wheels were nice and cool, therefore we could do that. If you've just been out driving, they've been in the sun, hit them with a bit of water first to cool them down, then you can spray the chemicals on them. Especially these flat black wheels. While Nick is still working on the wheels on the other side, again, garden hose, I don't have to worry about overspray as much. So I'm gonna hose off the vehicle. We have it on the shower mode, so it's not pressure, it's just flooding the surface with water. I'm not at all worried about damaging the paint, but also I'm not worried about getting all the suds off because we're gonna be re-foaming it again. The whole point of this is to let the first round of suds emulsify and take that dirt away for us. So now all we're left on the vehicle is traffic fill. Ivan, are we having less fun without the foam cannon and the pressure washer? Not at all. You know, I'd say like a 10% reduction maybe. Maybe? Or if you could that. add more incredible suds to your IK foamer. Yeah. Well, actually you'll need to pump up that IK foamer for the second round. All right, it's back here. Now, if you've never driven one of these big twin turbo Mercedes, try one. You're in for a treat. What's the experience like? You don't think it could something this big and this heavy could be that fast. I think with the foam rinse foam method, the first two steps are crucial. Right. Thorough foam, emulsify, let it break down the dirt, and then a nice pressure wash or flood with the garden hose. Yep. You're just trying to really get those first two steps right. Um, and then, and then the, the second foaming is almost for redundancy. It's redundancy, it's additional lubrication, additional emulsification, and to make it when you're putting the wash mitt on the surface, you already have that cushion of foam going on there. So I'll let you take the wash mitt since you like foaming so much. Indeed I do. And I'll follow you with the clay towel and iron remover. So Nick, just one little uh, thing here. People are gonna ask, can you get more foam? Well, if you go a little slower with the movement, yes, you can get that thick shaving cream foam. It's gonna take you a bit of a while to do that on the car. Yeah, I went a little bit faster, more willy-nilly, but yeah, if you're looking for those incredible suds, there made famous on Jamie the Cleaner's uh, Foam Town USA yeah. social media channels. Uh, th this, this foam is within your reach. You could also add more incredible sides as well. Um, so you can switch up your technique, a little bit more product if you'd like. Either way, we got our foam. I have the age old question, where on the vehicle should I start when I'm washing the paint? Top down. Now, if you're working outside, the shady side first. Get that shady side done, you're not in a rush. And then if you have the luxury of doing so, flip the car around, put the other car, other side in the shade. If you don't have that luxury, start on the sunny side and work very quickly. But we're in a controlled environment, we can take a bit of our time. A lot of this stuff just becomes common sense. Yeah. But you have to learn the basic rules before you can almost learn to trust your intuition. But like, Washing in the shade first, right? Yeah. It just makes sense to me. But you have to foam down a car in direct sunlight and get water spots everywhere to learn how powerful the sun is. Exactly. Like I did. But maybe listen to us and then don't make that mistake. <laughs> That's the goal. Exactly. We don't want you to make mistakes. We want you to have fun when you're detailing. Who out there feels like they're too short to detail the roof? And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave us a comment. Now, the iron remover, we're using it as a clay lube. So a couple sprays on the panel, a couple sprays on the towel, and I'm lightly going, oh wow, yeah. 
So, <laughs> I can hear it from here. Yeah, uh, definitely this one needs decontamination. That's rough, okay. But with a bit of patience, we'll get a nice smooth surface. A lot of people ask us in the comments, Ivan, you have a decontamination towel, but like, can I use a clay bar? Especially if it's really nasty paint. Yeah, in this case, a clay bar might be a little more effective. But a clay bar is an abrasive, meaning that the clay bar will scratch the surface. It will mar it. And you need to polish afterwards. Let's say you don't have our decontamination towel. It's on your wish list. It's in your checkout box. You haven't pulled the trigger yet. Maybe it's out of stock. I don't know. Yeah. And you've got a clay bar at home. What I have learned is using this particular decontamination towel now for about a year, it's made my clay bar technique actually a lot better. Right. So when I reach for a clay bar, I am doubling down on no pressure letting the, um, the iron remover or whatever's in my hand do the work. So even if you have a clay bar, um, the, the principles can actually be really effective that Ivan continues to teach with our decontamination towel, which is don't put any pressure down whatsoever. And that's more me just trying to tell people, hey, if you're out there watching this video and you don't have this right now and you're still looking for a, a tip, um, maybe we can meet them halfway, you know? Yeah, and the, you know, a traditional clay bar, they sell them in different grades. You have a, a heavy, a medium, and a mild. Get the mild, and you can usually pick them up at your local parts store. They're not, it's not an uncommon thing. Like at your local auto body or yeah. O'Reilly Napa, yeah. You can find some kind of clay bar there. Right. And even some big box stores have them too. Yep, you're right. Yeah, I can really hear it up there, Ivan. Well, it's getting smoother and smoother every pass. But yeah, it's definitely one of the most contaminated vehicles I've seen in a long time. So when you get to hammered paint, and it really, really, really is full of contamination, walk me through your strategy with our decontamination towel and the iron remover. Well, we're using the iron remover with the incredible suds as lubrication. From there, this one is an excessive case. But normally a couple passes and you've removed all that contamination, and then you're good to go. In this case, Nick, we're gonna be doing a little additional treatment. There could be a lot of tree sap on here. Uh, where we picked this vehicle up from, he's got lots of trees around. So that could be part of that contamination. So once we're done with the clay towel, we're gonna to be going with the water spot remover because we know it has water spots and also the tree sap remover to finally get that smooth surface. Let's say you're just running into tree sap and gunk and you just have to get aggressive and you know you're gonna polish after. Is that an excuse to get more aggressive with the towel or are you just asking for trouble? You're asking for trouble and your clay towel is not gonna last as long. It's not designed to be used with pressure. Because if you use this towel without pressure, it will last you hundreds of vehicles. Right. People may not believe it, but seriously, you use it, no pressure, you rinse it out with water, you dry it clay side up at the end. Yeah. I mean, how do you know if the, if the towel has seen better days and maybe should be retired? It'll start cracking on the surface. And not just little cracks, I mean chunks of the, uh, the synthetic surface coming off. And when that happens, it's time to get a new one. But proper maintenance will definitely make it last a long time. So seeing all the contamination on this, Nick, you may need to get a second towel here. You need some help? Once you're done washing, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, the worst areas for contamination on a vehicle are obviously the top, uh, but also the back end, like we mentioned, it accumulates a, a lot of dirt. And finally, the rocker panels right behind the wheels. Those are areas that see the most amount of abuse. Even the panoramic sunroof is stiff with contamination. Now, if you're working outside, you want to restrain yourself to smaller areas and rinse off the iron remover. If it does dry on the surface, not a big deal. It is going to come off, but you're going to need to rinse a heck of a lot more. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. This is horrendous.
Okay, so I've just done this panel right here, just this section, okay, and I've done a pretty good job, right? Now let's go over to an area that I haven't touched. So you listen to this. Just touch that. Just did this. Much different. And if you are dealing with a lot of contamination, you don't want to flip more frequently. That's a totally clean side. We got a lot of work to do. So considering the level of contamination on this vehicle, we've enlisted a little extra help. Sylvie is helping us get this done a little faster. One thing you'll notice, we're doing this with the decontamination towel, but we're not waiting till we get 100% no sound. Because we know that this vehicle also has water spots and also has tree sap on it. So we're getting the majority of the contamination off this way, and then we'll finish it off with a chemical decontamination. Let me add a bit more credible suds here because the panel is starting to get dry. Just to give us a little more additional lubrication. How's that hood coming along, Nick? Um, I think I'll just be here all day, Ivan. <laughs> no, it's pretty smooth now. What do we know about the life of this vehicle, Ivan? Uh, maintenance is not, or aesthetic maintenance is not this owner's strong suit. We'll put it that way. Isn't it wild though that someone spends this much money on a vehicle and it gets into rough shape? And it's not like they're not good people. It's, life gets in the way, right? You get, yeah. you get busy. And uh, it does take intention to keep up on your car. But the beauty of our line, our whole company, our mission is that anybody can do this, right? Anyone can do it and have fun doing it too. I know, it, it, it's like very enjoyable. You just, you just need to watch a few of our videos, you know, to get in the zone. Figure out what you need to do and why it's important. People ask, how do I remove bug guts easily? And it's this process. This process with our decon towel, you don't even need the iron remover necessarily, just the lubrication of the incredible suds. Uh, it'll just shave off those bug guts off the front of your vehicle very quickly. The more often you do this, so if you're washing your car in the summertime, you may want to lightly use your decontamination towel just for bug guts and just for your windshield. Uh, that'll really help get those bug guts off before they have a chance on the paint, especially to etch. There we go, Nick. Now, since we have a few little areas to do, I'm gonna, while I have the iron remover in hand, spray these wheels. Let it dwell a few minutes on the wheels. Got you there. Since we're dealing with the iron remover, you wanna keep rinsing until you don't see that little sudsy effect anymore. Because the iron remover has a way of getting into areas that you didn't think was possible and then coming out at a later date. I quite like rinsing with a garden hose because I just feel like you're flooding the panel on this shower setting. Yeah. It does feel like it's taking longer, but I feel like I'm doing the job the right way. Unfortunately though, it's using a lot of water. Yeah. So that's something you need to be cautious of. And if you're in an area that has water restrictions, well, garden hose may not be your friend. Next up is water spot remover. Now I'm gonna use a towel dampened in the soap, incredible suds. I'm gonna leave this towel rather wet. What do we want? We have water on the surface. We're just gonna spray the water spot remover on the surface, let it dwell for a minute, and then I'm gonna work it in with this towel. That way that little bit of agitation is gonna help dramatically with the, effectiveness of, with the effectiveness of the product and we're just gonna let it sit here. And water spot remover is one of these products that yes, we do use a little bit more of. You weren't kidding, Ivan. I do feel like I'm using a lot of water to try to flush this without yeah. a pressure washer. Well, that hose puts out roughly about six gallons per minute. Okay. And your pressure washer, in our case, puts out two gallons per minute. Now the water spot remover does such a great job at cleaning the paint that when Nick comes back around the side to rinse, we may actually see some form of beading on the car. Probably not a lot, but we'll see a little bit. And it's not because 
the water spot remover has anything in it to cause beading, it's just it deep cleans so well that now we're exposing paint. And fresh paint actually beads really well, so. I think that it's an underrated product in that on more details, I enjoy using water spot remover as just a natural step after decon. Exactly. It doesn't seem like it gets talked about all that much, but I think it's great for that. It's not a, shall we say, sexy product. Because you can't, I mean, actually, you can see the beading get restored. Snapping back when the pores of the clear coat actually get cleared of a lot of that salt, but um, don't sleep on this as a, as a maintenance product for your vehicle. Like every time you, you decontaminate the paint, whether you wipe it in with a wet towel or you just spray it on and rinse it off if you want to go a little faster, um, it's just a great step to take, you know, in terms of taking care of your baby. You can see some of the water starting to sheet off uh, much more rapidly than it was before. I wouldn't call this water beading, but the paint water behavior has absolutely changed after we use that water spot remover. She's rinsed, Ivan. She's rinsed. We're gonna rinse it one more time. As we mentioned before, on the roof, we have tree sap and on the hood as well. We got a lot of it off using the decontamination towel. The water spot remover removed a bit of it as well, but we're still gonna go over it with the tree sap remover just to give that last little bit of cleaning to get that tree sap out of the pores. So you would recommend decontaminating, then water spot remover, then tree sap remover if you're going in a really thorough step-by-step -step process? The tree sap remover will really depend on how bad it is. Now, this vehicle was so dirty when we started that we couldn't see that it needed tree sap remover. But if tree sap, if you know there's tree sap on it, then yes, you'll want to uh, take that off before doing the decontamination. What about just using this as like a final step if you were just OCD and wanted everything as clean as possible? Would that make any sense if you didn't have tree sap? That's perfect. Because it is a deep cleaner as well. And it also removes tar and things like that. So if you uh, happen to go to the drag set on a regular basis and have tar accumulating on the back of your vehicle, this is a great tool to get rid of that. And it's really just on the upper surfaces of this vehicle, so I don't need to dive deep down onto the fenders and things. So Nick, you can go ahead and rinse that off. Okay. tell you this roof is feeling a lot smoother than it was a few minutes ago. Are you noticing anything with the tree sap remover on the roof? Yeah, it's, I can feel the towel initially drag and then it goes smooth. So we are removing the last little vestiges of contamination on the roof. There are some people that also don't wash their roof on a regular basis, thinking, ah, so high up there, no one will see it. Wash your roof, this is a great example why you need to. All right, she's flushed. It's flushed, it's great. Now you flushed it down the side, so you just need to give a quick rinse to the final, sides. Final rinse there, yep. And while you're doing that final rinse, Nick, let's uh, add some beading to these wheels. So quick beads, it's gonna make these wheels a lot easier to clean the next time. Woo! Instant beading. Well, we call it quick beads, not insta beads, but close. Have you noticed some people are calling the Drip Catcher the Drip Catcher 4000 online now? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> we may have to change the name one day. It's easy to forget how good uh, Quick Beat smells. Yes. I reach for ceramic gloss most of the time, and I'm, I'm just smelling Quick Beads, and I'm wondering why. Why am I sleeping on Quick Beads? Are you sleeping on Quick Beads? It's amazing for your wheels, it's amazing for your paint. Uh, if you haven't used it in a while, just remember how great it is. While Nick finishes the rinsing, 
We're gonna be polishing this vehicle in another video. So we're not gonna be using a drying aid. We're just gonna go ahead and dry it. So we'll spare you that drying. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. But Nick, is there something else they should be looking for? Yeah, and it's right here.